I've got to be honest, I'm that uncultured with ballet that the only idea of the show that I had when I went into it was the sugar plum fairy scene from the 1994 film The Little Rascals with Alfalfa and Spanky. Everybody, this is Zoe from No Safer Place and today I am here with a review of a show that I saw last night for the very first time. That show was The Nutcracker. When I say I went in with no knowledge of the show, I really do mean that. I've never seen a ballet or anything of the sort so I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it but it was like entering a whole new world after the initial first scene in the orphanage. It was just kind of like I'd left planet Earth and entered a new dimension. I went with someone who has previously seen quite a few different versions of the Nutcracker so she was a lot more knowledgeable than I am and the opening scene was in an orphanage. Obviously I didn't know any different but that is something that apparently is very different to the original and from the conversations we had I would say that this adaptation is not traditional and I don't really feel like anything about it is traditional. It was crazy, it was bonkers but it was just utterly fantastical. It also really reminded me of how powerful dance can be. Usually when I see shows I'm used to dance being paired with singing or talking and that's kind of the easiest way to show any emotion. So to convey such strong emotions and a story so believably and convincingly with no words was just something really new to me and I just found it a truly beautiful concept. So if you're unfamiliar with the story of The Nutcracker, I'm going to share the story loosely of what this production was and how it was set. So the story focuses on Clara. It is set in a kind of dark and miserable orphanage. Everything is grey and almost feels cold which makes the rest of the show in contrast seem so vibrant and even more magical. So the orphanage has visitors and they're made to act happy and cheerful and grateful, everything of which they are not. And the governors give them a box of old toys and they each receive a gift from this old toy box and Clara gets the last pick and she is left with this doll. The doll kind of reminded me of Slappy from Goosebumps if you're familiar with that. It was a little bit creepy. And when midnight comes around, her mystical doll is transformed into a man. And the way that the orphanage transforms into the frozen lake for the next scene is just amazing. It's stunning and really cleverly done and then that frozen lake scene when the snow falls down for the first time and you're brought back to kind of like a childlike state it's just absolutely magical. I feel like snow transports us all back to a childlike state and that is so true in this show. And the spoiled princess Sugar whisks the doll aka the Nutcracker and entices him with her allure and almost sexiness. She really does ooze sexiness in this production. She's just really magnetizing and you're wondering, will Clara get her happy ending? Will she end up with a Nutcracker or Princess Sugar? And the story just kind of unravels from there. I'm going to leave telling you more of the story because I feel like when you enter Sweetie Land in act two, I want to leave that all as a surprise because it is a feast for the senses. The whole show is Feast for the Senses but particularly Act 2. The costumes and set are just... I've never seen anything like it in my life. Again, particularly in Act 2, they're just absolutely sublime. The Licorice All Sorts trio, her dress is just incredible. I would love to have that dress. It's stunning. And then the Gobstopper Boys, the Marshmallow Girls, Knickerbocker Glory, the humbug bouncer, they're all just kind of instantly recognisable sweets. They all have their own kind of personalities and character and I just absolutely loved all of their individual dances. I particularly loved the humbug bouncer. He was really funny and witty and to be funny and witty without using words, I didn't think it was possible but it definitely is. 
Not that I'm particularly well versed with ballet, but I would say it's not just traditional ballet. There seems to be quite a few dance styles incorporated into this show alongside ballet, of course which to me made it feel a little more modern and might appeal more to a younger audience as well as an older audience. The choreography is just second to none. It was just amazing. And a particular dance that I wanted to talk about was the dance around the cake in Sweetie Land in Act 2. That is one of the most gloriously outrageous things I have ever seen in my life. Just these people dressed up as different sweets, dancing on this gigantic cake to one of the most iconic pieces from the ballet. I just, it was amazing. It was magnificent. Honestly, if you go and see it, look out for that scene because it's probably one of my favourite scenes I've ever seen on a stage. It was wild. And of course, a special mention must go to the orchestra because let's be honest, they carry the entire show. Even if you have little knowledge of the show, as I say, I had no idea what I was expecting. I knew most of the music because they're such well-loved classics that people are so familiar with without even realizing. Like there were so many times throughout the show where I was like, oh, I know that song and oh, I know this tune from there and this song from there. And the orchestra just played it amazingly, so beautiful. They did get a standing ovation at the end, which was thoroughly deserved. The entire cast was absolutely sublime, but there were a few standout performances for me. And those performances were Shoko Ito, who played Clara. I don't think she is normally the person that plays the role. But oh my god, she was brilliant. She really kind of played the innocent and naive and really likeable character. She played that so well. And as an audience member, you really were rooting for her, which obviously was the purpose. And you really cared about what happened to her and wanted her to get with the Nutcracker and find her happiness. So yeah, I thought she was incredible. Another person who I thought was amazing was Harrison Drowsell. He was the Nutcracker and oh my God, talent aside, he is devastatingly handsome, which obviously is meant to be the case and he definitely lived up to that role. He was just spectacular and his performance was just brilliant. It was really hard to kind of take your eyes off him because he was just so mesmerising. But for me, my favourite person in the show was Monique Jonas and she played Princess Sugar. Her performance really was something special. Every emotion was so easy to understand. Her storytelling was so unique and beautiful and just absolutely brilliant. I just found myself compelled to watch her whenever she was on the stage, even when the entire cast was on the stage. I was just drawn to her because she was just magnetizing, absolutely magnetizing. The show was just under two hours long, so it was nice to go at half seven and actually be home at a reasonable hour for a change because usually when I go into the theatre it's a really late night, but I was home by half ten. We sat in the stalls and we was in row E, 28 and 29 I think. I'll insert a picture here to let you know what the view was like. What I loved about it is it made me feel really emotional. I teared up quite a few times throughout the performance and I felt almost childlike throughout it. It just made me feel like a child again and that I could just let loose and have fun and enjoy entirely what I was watching, just completely detach myself from everyday life. It was a much needed break from the world. Particularly after the past few years that we've all had, I think this is the show the world needs right now. I'm not sure how far it veers from the traditional story because obviously I've only seen this production. What I can say is it is bloody brilliant and if you have a chance to see it, please go and see it because it is so, so good. If you're like me and it's the first time you've ever seen a ballet, this is the perfect one to pop your ballet cherry to because it's that good. It's touring the country until April. It's in London until the 30th of January. I will leave a link in the description box below if you want to go and check that out. And are there any other ballets you would recommend after seeing The Nutcracker? Because I feel like I need to see another now and see if it's as good as that one. I need something to compare it to. 
I also want to say a thank you to Raw PR for inviting me to this event because I just had the most incredible time. I also have programs if you want to pick a program up and these were £6. I mean you can just see from the cover how absolutely glorious this show is going to be and it did not disappoint. Yeah, maybe we'll be getting some ballet reviews in the future, who knows. If you like this video don't forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe, all that usual good stuff. Also you can turn on the notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos which is usually around once a week. I hope you all have enjoyed this video, let me know what you would like to see more of on my channel and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you, bye!